this morning. Um, I know it's early for a Sunday morning. It is for me. If I were presenting at this time, I'm not sure that I would be at this panel either. <laughs> but uh, this is the Gender, Sex, and Sexuality uh, panel. And I'm honored to be here with Roberta Gregory and Donna Barr. Um, and we're going to actually be spending uh, a, a lot of the panel um, discussing their work, and they're going to talk about their work. Um, but I wanted to, um, I love Professor at San Diego State, and I, and I do visual auditory cultures, and I, I publish on comics and graphic novels. And um, I just wanted to kind of start out with, um, you know, talking a little bit about um, some of my work that uh, is uh, forthcoming. And I've also written about uh, Roberta Gregory's uh, Bitchy Butch. Um, that's in my book that's coming out. In other articles that have been published as well. So um, I'm just going to run through um, uh, a little bit of uh, something that I've been working on before we shift to Roberta, Roberta and Donna's work, and then we'll open it up to a conversation about uh, gender, sex, and sexuality in comedy. So does that sound good? All right. Um, one of the uh, in, in, in academia, uh, one of the sort of central uh, questions with comics is whether or not it's been a sort of legitimate, not just a legi legitimate art form, but as something that's actually legitimate to study and that's like a serious uh, topic of study. And uh, there's a groundbreaking special issue of American literature that's coming out in uh, June 2018 called uh, Queer, uh, uh, it's, it's called, it's a special issue on queer comics. And this is something that is um, really, really different for this uh, issue of American literature. American literature is the top journal in the field. And for the first time in the journal's over 100 year history, there is going to be uh, a, an issue devoted not just solely to comics, but solely to queer comics. And um, it's edited by Derek Scott and Ramsey Fawaz, um, both of whom uh, write about comics from um, the perspective of you know, racial difference, gender difference, sexual difference. And they've edited this issue that's coming out um, in June. And I'm honored um, to have an essay in that. Um, that. My essay is called Adulterated Age. Um, or it's called Unsuitable for Children, question mark, um, Adulterated Age and Underground Graphic Narratives. So I'm just going to sort of run through um, pretty quickly uh, the two texts that I'm talking about in that article. And um, it's something just to, to, to really think about uh, when we're sort of situating Roberta's and Donna's work in this larger history of underground comics as a really, really fr fruitful place to talk about gender and sexuality. Um, and so the, you know, one of the texts um, I talk about in, in, in the article is um, this collaborative graphic, two collaborative, collaborative graphic texts. One is um, by uh, James Romberger, Marguerite Van Cook, and David Wanarowitz. And um, the cover of American Literature is actually um, from that very graphic novel. And so it's really kind of nice to have uh, James's and uh, Marguerite's work on the cover. And it's the one that goes with my article. Um, and uh, this is their, uh, the, the, their graphic novel um, that I talk about. Uh, David Warner Rhodes, if, 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 you, if you guys don't know um, who he is, he was uh, a AIDS activist and um, he was also a poet, he was also a writer, he was also a performer. And um, one of the things that uh, his work um, really, really did was give a, a, a sort of, um, you know, angry but powerful voice to the epidemic. And he was a member of ACT UP, you know, which was the, the AIDS activist organization. But uh, in, in 96, um, and, and, and this was after he had died, um, in 96, uh, uh, he, he published Seven Miles a Second, which was essentially his um, 
kind of like an autobiographical story of his life, and he had it in three different sections. And he had a really, really hard life. He um, lived on the streets. Um, he was a teen. He, he was a child prostitute, and he was a teenage hustler. And then he was, you know, a gay man living with AIDS. And the three sections of the graphic novel sort of uh, work through those different moments in his life. And um, in 2012, Fantagraphics reissued Seven Miles a Second. So this is the cover of the reissued uh, uh, cop you know, copy of, uh, of it. And it's a larger, almost like coffee table book. When it originally came out in 96, it was like the standard comic size. Um, but it's, it's, it's this sort of affordable, you know, larger coffee table book. But what's, what's important about the reissue was that unlike in the, the, the original 1996 version of it, it correctly credited Marguerite Van Cook, which is James Romberger's uh, partner, his wife, um, as the colorist. And the coloring is so important in this book. And so it's, it's actually, it was a really, really good thing to have a reissue because it correctly uh, actually gave her, um, you know, due credit for her coloring um, in the graphic novel and also correctly um, credited James Romberger with, as text editor, okay? So this is really a collaborative uh, project. It's, it's David's life, it's David's writing, David Warner Rose's writing, but um, James Romberger and Marguerite Van Cook are really, really the co-authors here, and they really sort of, you know, brought the vision to life. And um, there's some really fantastic images in uh, Seven Miles, and you can sort of see here um, some of the nuances that uh, Romberger and Van Cook are capturing as far as Juan Rose's childhood. Um, here he's sort of hustling in front of a teenage, or he's, he's hustling in front of this aquatics store, and um, I don't know if you can see it here, but it says like water sports in the window, okay? So um, there's these like, you know, really fantastic, you know, visual kinds of uh, cues that uh, Romberger is playing on when we're thinking about, you know, transgressive, transgressive sexuality, you know, water sports is like a urine fetish, um, for those who don't know. And also, um, right here, um, he says, the worst thing about the weight between customers was, um, you know, moving every few minutes so that the vice wouldn't get wise, okay? And so it's supposed to be, you know, this, this young boy hustling in front of this aquatic store, and we get, we have the, the, this moment where, um, uh, basically, a, 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 a a father accompanying his son to sort of shop for aquatics equipment is also can be read as, you know, a John, you know, right, exactly. So it's really, really sort of, you know, problematic but and transgressive, but also really, really, um, I, I think, an important part of depicting his life. And uh, Ron Berger and Van Cook do just this fantastic job. And there's this. This is um, when he's, uh, he, he's he's in this sort of seedy hotel room, and um, he's watching heterosexual sex for the first time through a hole in the door. Okay, so it's this really fantastic moment because instead of sort of being uh, freaked out by the fact that he's getting filleted here by a um, older man, he's supposed to be like nine years, you know, he's supposed to be like nine years old here, right here. The first time, it had me in awe of the taboo, um, the first time I'd seen how men, men's and women's bodies interact, having only had sex with older men since I was nine. Okay, and again, here we can see Romberger and Van Cook really, really do this extraordinary job of capturing the, 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 the moment with the text boxes, but also the sort of you know, constellation of images there in relationship to um, the sort of uh, young boy experiencing these adult kinds of um, scenarios. So it's what I'm calling in my article, adulterated age. So it's it, the, the, the experiences are adult oriented, but also adulterate means to worsen. And that worsening has to do with um, kind of uh, acknowledging the fact that as a gay man, a gay man living with AIDS, his body is deteriorating. His body is worsening. 
So um, again, I, if, if you're interested, um, I have the, the proof of the article here, the page proofs, but um, it'll be out in a couple of couple of months in the special issue. Here too, um, the lettering. I think uh, Romberger's lettering is absolutely fantastic um, in terms of like giving us this this audibly confrontational style. Okay, and then we have the sort of rotted corpse, corpse with an analog television rolling. Um, for those of us in the room who are old enough to remember that yeah. when, when the television yeah. was mismatched with its signal, it would sort of roll, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And here we have um, that as a marker of being sort of suspended in time as a way of, you know, really, really thinking about um, the, 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 deterior, the deteriorating body and the, the, the body that is disintegrating with the disease and um, he sort of captured that in this in this um, hospital bed with analog television, the dinosaur skeleton. And we have the, the, the text sort of shouting out at us about these homophobic systems that, that are regulating the body with AIDS. And um, so yeah, that's and, and it sort of ends with this. I just think that this is an extraordinary, also another extraordinary um, image of Ron Berger and Van Cook. Here too, we can see that Van Cook is not invested in these um, normative ways of coloring. She's, uh, you know, yeah. you know, here with the mailbox, right? And so, um, again, it's, it, it, it was a really, really important thing to have her correctly credited on that reissue as the colorist in 2012. Also, yeah, yeah please. The colors are much nicer on the screen than um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Could I say something about the quote dinosaur skeleton? Yes, it's actually a small elephant, one of the extinct small elephants. Oh, okay. So it's uh, you know it's part way through the evolutionary process of becoming a larger animal, but that is a small extinct elephant. So I don't know okay. what the reference to elephant is, but that's okay. That's thank you for that correction. Or a mammoth or okay, but you know either way, I mean I think that that's we're, we're he's saying something about. with an elephant. Yeah. Well, I mean, the fact that it's a, a, a skeleton, okay, is, is, is really showing the sort of, you know, um, you know, the limitation of longevity, right? So, um, so the, uh, the, thank you for that, Donna. I, just, I didn't know if there was a reference, though, that had something to do with the mammal. And, and the, other, the other collaborative text I talk about in the article is the one that Kathy Acker did um, with uh, Diane DeMassa and Freddie Bayer. Um, in 96, Kathy Acker wrote a book called Pussy King of the Pirates, but actually before that, uh, there was this, I don't know if I would even call it a graphic novel. My, you know, when I teach this one, my students say, that's not a graphic novel. Well, no, it's not. It's a graphic text. And this is 95, Pussycat Fever. And what Pussycat Fever did was pre-source some of the content from Pussy King of the Pirates. Um, and then uh, with uh, images from Diane DeMassa, who uh, of course did the Hothead Paisan, Homicidal Lesbian Terrorist, the uh, queer cult uh, comics classic. Um, she and Bitchy Butch should be very good friends because both of them could conquer the world, I think. If the <laughs> yeah. They hate each other. They probably hate each other, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. They hate <laughs> yeah but they could. Even in hating each other, they could conquer the world. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, so Diane and Masa collaborated with, and, and Freddie Bayer collaborated with Acker and did some illustrating for just just the sort of excerpt of Pussy King of the Pirate. Mm -hmm. um, but we really want to again think about this as a queer collaboration. It's a, a bunch of uh, text that uh, came out. This is a record that uh, also went with Pussy King of the Pirates by the post punk band the Mekons. And um, S. Clay Wilson, of course, the alternative comics writer, did the cover for that. And um, if you look at the liner notes, there's like pirate maps in there, just like the, 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 there are inside the, um, the, the, the original source novel. So really, this novel kind of is reaches out and becomes this constellation of three different texts. And I just concentrate on the, 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 the graphic text of this piece. Frey Bayer here, um, again, really just like with the water sports with Romberger, she does some really in interesting wordplay here with pussy, okay? It's this girl holding cats, but of course to an adult listener, pussy can only ever really sound like, you know, a somewhat pejorative name for female genitalia. So, um, Freddie Bayer is sort of like playing on these this this sort of liminal space between adult and child perspectives when working with something like a girl holding pussies. 
And I actually, actually uh, subtitled this piece Pussies in the Article <laughs> to sort of accentuate the wordplay there. Um, Diane DeMassa, she, um, when I talked to her about this, the schoolgirl scene, um, again, the, the, all these girls in these sort of various modes of disobedience, one's touching herself, one has a cigarette, one has a dunce cap in the corner there. Um, Diane told me that th this was actually one of, um, the, one of the favorite pieces that she's ever done for anything, believe it or not, even though it didn't get a lot of, um, you know, circulation um, in terms of, <coughs> compared to Hothead. Um, so this sort of like accompanies uh, the text, and really Kathy Ackert's work is very experimental, but in the excerpt from uh, Pussy King of the Pirates, it's from the Pirate Girls section, and that's a section where she's talking about the sort of um, childhood sexual abuse and the way that she's sort of negotiating it in relationship to adult desires, very much the way um, uh, Wanda Rhodes is doing in, 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 in a Seven Miles a Second. And so the two go together really well because it's about negotiating adult desires with these sort of traumatic sexual uh, traumas as a kid. And so sort of like, what does that look like? Well, for Acker, it looks like this sort of experimental stream of consciousness. For Juan and Roe, it's, it's, this, it's this sort of, you know, reconciliation in terms of, you know, um, living with AIDS or dying with AIDS, if you will. And uh, lastly, this is, uh, again, just another piece that I think is really nice from Pussycat Fever, where you have this graveyard scene, but you'll notice in the graphic text that she'll, she'll use fragments. So this is an example of like a, an image and its fragment juxtaposed with some of the writing there. My father and his closest friend discussed the ways and plans to behead all the unnatural girls who had made this graveyard their home. Girls under the dirt who placed their hand inside each other's cunts and drew them out muddied and bloodied, put these fingers into their own mouths, lips left brown and red. So again, this sort of like childish uh, gesture of putting hands in one's mouth is also sort of a very adult sexual gesture of you know putting fingers in cunts and hands, and it becomes a really sort of messy. Um, but really sort of, you know, fantastic disorganization of adult versus childhood experiences. And um, so that's really what my piece is about in the issue, but I highly recommend you do pick up the special issue, which will be out in June. Um, and from here, I'd like us to um, transition to uh, veterans of the underground uh, comics, uh, comics literary history with is Roberta Gregory and Donna Barr, and I'll just turn this over to Roberta. Okay. If you want to go next, sure. I don't know if you want to switch or do you want me to go? No, no, go ahead. I'll just, I'll just move. Okay. Or, yeah, it's up to you. That's the little. Okay. Control. Yeah. Just, okay. just do mus musical chairs. Great. <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, here's um, my 